Few things are more devastating personally than being the victim of an injury caused by someone else's negligence. Today, we're going to talk about the seven things you must do immediately and the process of navigating a personal injury claim to maximum potential. You know, you can tell a lot of jokes, you hear a lot of jokes about personal injury lawyers, and they get a lot of guff. A lot of people associate them with this. But in all seriously, if you are injured in an accident that wasn't your fault, there can be nothing more devastating than losing everything and trying to figure out if you have any rights and going up against the big powerful insurance companies who are corporations or mutual associations actually, and they have one thing on their mind, the bottom line. Today we're gonna to talk about seven steps you can take if you're injured that will protect your rights to help your family survive the devastation that can come when you're injured in an accident that wasn't your fault. Step one, it goes without saying that if you're injured, take care of yourself. Make sure you get great medical attention. Make sure that you understand the full extent of the injury that will often take x-rays or a CT scan or an MRI. Follow the counsel of your doctor and do everything you can to get better as quickly as possible before you even worry about contacting an attorney. Because at the end of the day, the most important thing and the one thing that all the dollars in the world can't do is restore your good health. And any good, good lawyer, the number one thing they will want from you is that you're better. Because there is no amount of money that can compensate for the loss of a limb, the loss of activity in your life, the loss of the happiness that comes with good health as we do everything we can in our lives to preserve our good health. So the first thing you should do is get medical attention, take care of yourself, before you even think about talking to a personal injury lawyer. Number two, once you've taken care of yourself, engage with a personal injury lawyer, and there are several reasons for this. First of all, to the extent that you can keep a record of how serious your injuries were by taking photographs, taking video evidence, or by just simply keeping a journal of your pain levels from on a scale of one to 10 day by day, as you document and preserve your recollection of how bad it is, it will help you. I know if you're like our family, if you're like me, um, the pain of the past dissipates fairly quickly as you have new experiences in life. So your ability to keep track, keep a record, keep a journal, take pictures, and preserve the evidence of how serious the injury was can go a long way in helping a jury understand, an insurance company understand, the extent of the injury and how devastating it was in terms of pain and a restriction on activity it was. So. After you've taken care of yourself, be sure and consult with a competent personal injury lawyer so you can preserve all your rights and give yourself the best opportunity to build a strong case so that you can receive everything that you deserve from the negligence and actions of someone else. Three, after you've engaged with the lawyer, the lawyer will take great pains to investigate the claim, to try to figure out what happened and to determine who might ultimately be responsible for the injury. Uh, let me give you an example. In one case I know, uh, a person was renting uh, from a, a friend in, in their basement and tripped and fell and, uh, and injured her face on a nail that was protruding outside of an unfinished basement wall. This client didn't even know that she had a right to make a claim on the insurance company that insured the homeowner's home. She felt like she had to come out of pocket for all of her surgery, and then she had to live with this unpleasant looking scar for the rest of her life without any real professional help. By consulting with an attorney, she became aware that there was an avenue to have experts do surgery to repair as much as possible the injury to her face, which was a very obviously personal thing for her, and then also recover to the full extent of her damages, not from her neighbor, who she didn't want to hurt, she loved her neighbor, but from an insurance company who was retained specifically for this type of, of, a, of a compensation to a victim of the negligence of, of their insured. So the discovery phase is the next phase where the lawyer will ask you a lot of questions, try to understand all the circumstances, seek all the medical records, and give you advice so that your lawyer can build the case that is then presented to the insurance company for a resolution of your claim, and that's step three. Step four, 
So after you get to the point where the discovery phase has happened, the, the lawyer is able to put together a case and make a demand. And let me tell you how important it is that you have a good lawyer. This particular client was injured at a, at a resort and made a claim and demand upon the insurance company as an individual. And that insurance company came back with kind of a lowball offer. And then our firm was engaged and we ended up getting this client four times what the insurance company had offered in order to resolve the case. And if we'd gone to trial, we might have received more, but the client made that decision, which is appropriate. So the lawyer, once the discovery phrase is done, can let you know what he or she thinks the claim is worth, and then put together a strategy on how to negotiate with the insurance company to put you in the best position possible to negotiate a fair resolution to your case. If these negotiations discussions don't bear fruit, then you can always go to another phase, which is the trial phase, which we'll talk about next. But again, I can't emphasize enough the importance of helping your lawyer by you know, engaging a lawyer earlier on, um, going through the discovery phase, and then giving your lawyer all the resources and tools necessary for him or her to carefully evaluate your case and let you know what it's worth and what the initial demand should be, which is then presented to the insurance company for resolution, and if it's not resolved, then we go to the next step. Step five normally would be file a lawsuit. Now, a lawsuit is a demand formally made in court where you assert in writing allegations, and you talk about the story of what happened and how it was the fault of the other person, if it is, and how you were a victim of another person's negligence or bad acts that caused your injury. Some lawyers, and the more aggressive lawyers, will actually file a lawsuit regardless because they want to send a message, which is an important message to send to the insurance company, that they are serious and they're going to litigate. Now, there are a lot of firms out there that like to just settle. They're kind of like called settlement factory. But my sense is that the most success we receive is when we actually prepare and file a lawsuit early on to send a message to the insurance company that we're serious, that this is a serious injury, and that if they won't come to the table and negotiate in good faith, we're prepared to go all the way to trial. We have witnesses that we're preparing, we have experts that we've prepared, and we're ready to tackle this and go all the way if necessary. In response to that, insurance companies will take you more seriously than if you simply pick up the phone and ask for a settlement. So the next step in the, in, in the whole phase is once you've done the discovery, prepare the demand, file the lawsuit, and then you can talk more later. Phase six, this is where the heavy lifting goes on to try to resolve your case. Now, keep this in mind. It's not always in your best interest to have a case settle. Sometimes you have to show that you're willing to go all the way to the trial to get the maximum impact from your claim. Now, you think about it this way. Personal injury lawyers usually work on what's called a contingency basis, which means that they're not paid their costs or their fees unless they recover a result. Some of the bigger firms sometimes are incented incentivized is another word, way to say that, to settle early on to kind of keep the cash flow going. I'm not saying that anyone who does that is in some way violating any code of ethics that they have because we're all supposed to do what we believe is in the best interest of the client. But sometimes a message needs to be sent to an insurance company that you're willing to go all the way in order for them to kind of cut loose and stop safeguarding their assets when you have an injury that needs to be paid fairly. And so this negotiation or mediation, mediation is nothing more than a fancy way of having a neutral third party help you mediate the resolution of the case. This negotiation phase and mediation phase is very important, but before too long through that cycle, you get a real feel of whether the insurance company is going to treat you fairly or not. And you want to make sure that you have a lawyer who's prepared to go all the way to trial in case you don't get a reasonable and fair settlement offer from the insurance company in response your mediation and negotiation efforts. So this phase six is about mediation and negotiation. Step seven is the trial step. The trial phase is the end point in all of those discussions. The trial point is where a jury actually can hear your story. So sometimes it's important to have a lawyer who's prepared to go all the way to trial so you're not leaving any money on the table if you're sincerely injured in an accident. We spent a lot of time talking about your rights if you're injured in an accident. As you're looking for help, I would encourage you to reach out and talk to us. Click the link below and 
one of my professionals will reach out to you and provide you with some guidance and, and connect you with someone who can help you if you're injured in an accident. One of the most devastating things that may ever happen to your, your life is when you are hurt, not because you did anything wrong, but because someone else violated a duty that they have to exercise good care in their area of responsibility. If I can help you find the right professional, I want to do that. So click the link below and let one of my people contact you, understand your situation, and see what I can do to make sure that you have the best representation possible. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful in helping you identify the seven things that you can do if you're ever injured in an accident caused by someone else's neg negligence. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you can be notified when we have other videos for you. And speaking of other videos, please watch this next one.